Hello everybody, and welcome to the area outside of a eukaryotic cell. Meet our main character, Ollie Oxygen. He is currently very lonely. When, suddenly, it appears that Ollie has found a friend, Annie Oxygen. Together, they form an O2 molecule. But, there's a looming feeling, a longing for something more. A place where you can escape the pressure of all the other molecules. One day, while going for a float with Annie, Ollie stumbles upon something he'd heard of but never seen. The lipid bilayer. It's huge, stretching on for micrometers in all directions. Annie explains that it forms the membrane of an enormous eukaryotic cell. She tells him that it's made up of many, many phospholipids packed together into a mosaic. He wonders out loud, what could it be like inside of a cell? Annie tells him that he's found a cholesterol molecule, which helps to maintain a certain fluidity in the bilayer. Fluidity, Ollie exclaims, I wonder if we could... Ollie has just experienced a process known as passive diffusion. He is easily able to permeate the membrane, and, there being so many other molecules on their side, it doesn't require any energy. This tendency for molecules to move to the less concentrated side of a membrane is called osmosis. We're in! Come on, let's go meet all the other molecules. After months of touring the cell, Annie leaves to join a fatty acid, and Ollie meets two new atoms, the hydro twins. Together, they form a water molecule. For the first time in months, Ollie again stumbles upon the great phospholipid bilayer. Realizing the Hydro Twins have never seen the world outside of the cell, he rushes towards it, but finds that he is unable to penetrate the tails of the phospholipids. One of the twins explains that the individual phospholipids each have a negative, hydrophilic head and a positive, hydrophobic tail. As a water molecule, the group is now polar, preventing them from passing through the membrane. This comes as a pressing realization for Ollie, who faces the prospect of being trapped in this one cell for the rest of his life, which, being an atom, is a very long time. But wait, one of the Hydro Twins spots something in the distance, they float over. It's extraordinary, they find what appears to be a protein forming a pathway right through the cell membrane, which is the perfect size and shape for them to pass through. As it turns out, what our merry band is passing through is a channel protein through a process called facilitated transport. This protein provides a pathway for molecules like water to get through where they otherwise couldn't. Come on, I have so much to show you two. After months of traveling outside of the cell, Ollie and the two Hydro Twins have met many new friendly atoms. Together, they all form a glucose molecule. They spend their days roaming the body looking for adventure, but one day, a CO2 molecule coming from the cell tells them that the cell is in need of energy and that all glucose molecules should report to the inside of the cell. The group sets off immediately. Everyone through the channel protein, Ollie guides, but they are unable to pass through. It seems like some other molecules have already arrived, and the molecules in this cell are so concentrated that our group is unable to transport passively from its low concentration area. This difference of concentrations within a solvent is called the concentration gradient, and it determines which direction molecules tend to flow. The Hydro Twins are upset! What are we to do now? Fortunately, Connie Carbon has experience with the concentration gradient. She tells them that they're going to need a different kind of protein, and some energy. After floating along the membrane, they come across a new type of protein. This one almost looks like a claw, with one end open. They enter, and Connie Carbon asks if anyone has any ATP. The Hydro Twins, who always carry some extra ATP, take it out. Extraordinarily, the ATP powers the strange protein, pushing the crew through to the other side of the bilayer. Thanks to Connie's quick thinking, the molecules arrive. This is actually an active transport protein. When molecules need to move against the concentration gradient, they can't rely on simple passive diffusion. They have to use active transport. Proteins like this one, powered by the energy given by ATP, can pump molecules to even the side of a membrane that has a higher concentration. The atoms all give three cheers, for they know they are now able to help power the cell. Now, after this long and arduous journey, there must only be one question left on your mind. How do cells communicate with the outside world? Well, if you follow me, you will see a glycolipid and a glycoprotein. These structures, marked by attached carbohydrates, help the cell to communicate with the outside world, including things like recognizing other cells and eliciting an immune response. 